Good afternoon folks, it's me Adam Garrett. Well, it's afternoon for me. Don't know what time it is for you. But listen, what's better than a pasta bake? A flipping meatball pasta bake, that's what. So to cut a long story short, if you've watched the IKEA series so far, you'll know I've got a shed load of meatball mix in the freezer. And I opened up the freezer the other day and I just saw all this stuff and I'm like, I need to have a clear out. Before I can do any more recipe videos, I need to eat some of this stuff. And I had loads of this meatball mixture, so I thought, why not knock up a nice pasta bake? Because let's face it, pasta bakes are amazing. Fantastic midweek family meal. You can knock this up, the kids are gonna love it. You're gonna love it. I'm gonna love it. He's not gonna love it. Now before we get into this, if you're new to this video, please hit that subscribe button. And when you do, make sure you hit the bell icon, allow all notifications. That way, when I upload a new video, you get notified. Now, as with all my recipes, all the ingredients will be below the video in the description. If you go underneath the video, there's a little section that says show more. Click that, you can get all the info you need. But that's enough of me waffling, let's get on with it. Right, okay, so I've got my meatball mixture here. Again, I'm using the IKEA ones that I've got left over. You can see, if you can see that, it says IKEA test number two, 24th of June. That was the last batch that we did. Is that still frozen? Uh, no, it's just caught a little bit. For those of you who might be interested, which is probably, let's be honest, none of you, I've got a problem with my fridge. Basically, at the back of the fridge, it forms like an iceberg. And whenever I put something at the back of it, it gets partly frozen. I think one of the vents or sort of little drainage holes is blocked. I don't know, it's just time for a new one, I think. Anyway, enough of me waffling. So, what I'm gonna do with this meatball mixture is, you guessed it, form it into meatballs. So all I'm gonna do is pinch off a piece. And I don't want them like really big. In fact, that's probably a bit too big. You know, I just want them nice and small so they're nice bite-sized pieces. Nice little pebble-sized meatball, that's what you want. But I'm gonna whiz through the rest of this mix and then we can brown them off. Right, so got the meatballs here, ready to go. Let's get the pan onto a medium high heat. Come on, you bitch. Lights. Thank you. And then just a drop of neutral oil, like sunflower or vegetable is fine. And once the pan's nice and hot, we'll go in with the meatballs. Now all we're really looking to do is to get some color on these. We don't need to cook them all the way through because they're gonna finish cooking in the oven. We just want some nice golden brown color on there just to really bring out the flavour of the meatballs. Doesn't take very long at all, a couple of minutes if that. Okay, so once they're browned off, I'm just gonna empty them into a bowl. I've also forgotten how delicate these are, so I've gotta be really careful. Oh, come on my little babies, nice and gently. Now, all that goodness that's in the pan, don't throw that away, because what we're gonna do is use that to soften our veg. So, the vegetables then. So I've got an onion, sort of smallish, carrot, celery. And what I'm gonna do is grate them. Now, there's two reasons for that. Firstly, it's because if you were to chop them, it's gonna take longer to kind of break down, go soft, etc. By grating them, it's gonna take much less time to get the sweetness out of the vegetables and get them nice and soft. The second reason as well is if you're making this for kids, it's a great way to hide veg in a pasta sauce because it kind of disappears into the sauce, they don't really know it's there. Unless they're like super veg detectives, in that case, you're screwed. So, what I'm gonna do is get my knife. Actually, I don't need the knife, do I? Yes, I do. And all I'm gonna do is peel the carrot and onion, maybe the celery as well, because it's a bit stringy on the outside, and then we'll get them grated. <laughs> Oh God, Ugh. bloody onions. Right, so we've got our veg grated. I've also grated up two garlic cloves as well. And we are ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna add some more oil to this pan with all those delicious meat juices in there. I'm gonna get this onto a low heat and I'm gonna add the veg, but not the garlic yet. We'll add that a bit later. Now what we need to do is to get these nice and soft. Okay, just take your time, just sweat the veg down. And because we grated it, it's not gonna take that long. It's gonna take about five, maybe 10 minutes. The smell is just gonna waft through your house. It's gonna get everybody salivating, get the kids hungry, which is good, because they need to eat their dinner. They should get no pudding. So I'm gonna sweat this down for five, 10 minutes, take my time. I may partake in a beverage. And once that's done, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. You can see, look, 
how reduced that is. Look how soft they've gone. So next thing I'm going to add is the garlic. Don't add it straight away because it might burn and then it will taste bitter and not very pleasant and you'll chuck it all in the bin. Also, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of tomato puree. Now we need to cook this out. You've seen me do this plenty of times before. If you don't cook out tomato puree, it can make your food taste bitter. If you've ever eaten something with tomato puree in it and it tastes a bit tinny and a bit bitter, that's why, you need to cook it out. So I'm gonna cook this out for about a minute and then we'll add the tomatoes. Okay, so after about a minute, we've cooked out that tomato paste and also that garlic. I'm now gonna add the tomatoes. Now I'm using really good quality ones because that's what I've got. If you have some cheaper brand ones, then it's really not an issue. All you need to do is just add the tomatoes and maybe add like a pinch of sugar, maybe like a teaspoon because cheaper brands tend to be a bit bitter. But these are really good, so I'm gonna add those in. Then I'm gonna fill the can about halfway of water. Just like so, and just swill it around and get that in. Now I know it looks really thin right now, but it is gonna reduce and concentrate. And I'm gonna add a few dashes of Worcester sauce, probably about two teaspoons worth. And that's just gonna add a bit of acidity, add a bit of depth and all that lovely stuff. A bit of salt and pepper. This flipping pepper grinder's rubbish. I don't know what it is with me, but I can't seem to get a decent pepper mill. I mean, this is gonna take me ages to get a decent amount out. <sighs> My life. Good pinch of salt. Now, what I'm gonna do is to bring that to a simmer, reduce it by about a quarter. It's far too runny at the moment, so we need to reduce it down, let it thicken up, and let those flavors concentrate. And whilst that's doing its thing, we can get on and cook the pasta. Now, pasta-wise, I'm using Fiorelli. You don't have to use this particular pasta, but you kind of want a pasta that's gonna catch the sauce, you know, get trapped in the little nooks and crannies. So penne is good, fusilli, rigatoni are all good pastas for this. And if you look at the shape of this, it's got a nice little hole in it, you can see right through, and that sauce is gonna get trapped in that pasta. Don't eat it raw though, cook it first. Okay, so I've got a pan of boiling water here. Now, a little tip for you when cooking pasta. You don't need to add olive oil and all that kind of stuff to the water to stop the pasta sticking. All you need is plenty of water. If you don't use enough water, that's where it's gonna stick. And you need to add plenty of salt, okay? There's an old saying that the pasta water should be as salty as the Bay of Naples. And once I've got it to a rolling boil, I'm gonna add the pasta. I want about 250 grams, so about half of this pack and I'm gonna cook the pasta about 50% the way. I don't wanna cook it all the way through because it's gonna finish off cooking in the oven. So if you're following the packet instructions, if it says 10 minutes, cook it for five. If it says eight minutes, cook it for four. Now this pasta says it takes eight to 10 minutes to cook, so I'm gonna cook it for about five minutes, and then I'll drain it off and we can assemble the dish before we put it in the oven. Okay, so it's been about five minutes, and I'm just gonna test the pasta, see how it's doing. And the only way you'll tell is if you sort of press it. If there's a bit of bounce there, you can feel it's not quite cooked, you know it's ready to go. You can also try a piece as well. It's still quite firm, a little bit chewy, so that's ready to drain off. Right, so I've drained off the pasta. I'm gonna add that back into the pan. And then to the pasta, I'm gonna add the meatballs that we browned off earlier. And next we're gonna add the sauce. You can see it's reduced a bit there. Now, I don't like my pasta bakes too saucy. If you want more sauce in yours, just simply omit the water part and then add another can of tomatoes. But this is gonna be fine for me. And then I've got some fresh basil here. And literally all I'm gonna do is just tear off some leaves and then just kind of rip them in, okay? Nothing fastidious about it, just tear them off. And you can't really overdo it too much with basil, but about eight big leaves is gonna be fine. I'm gonna add a splash of extra virgin olive oil just for that flavor. And then very gently, I'm gonna mix this up so all that sauce and the meatballs combine together into one harmonious pile of joy. And all I'm gonna do now is to turn that out into a baking dish. In it goes. Give it a bit of a jiggle. Make sure those meatballs are nice and evenly spaced out. Now, of course, a pasta bake would not be complete without cheese. You can use whatever cheese you like. Any good melting cheese is fine. I'm using a mozzarella and cheddar mix. I'm just gonna be really generous. Okay, don't scrimp on the cheese. Don't be mean. And once you've added the cheese, that is now ready for the oven.
Now cooking wise, you wanna bake that for about 20 to 30 minutes, just to finish cooking the meatballs, get that cheese nice and melted on top, nice and crispy. And temperature wise, about gas mark five, which is, hang on, see if I can get this right. 190 degrees C, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm, did I get that right? But check back in a bit, we'll get this out of the oven when it's cooked, we'll let it cool slightly, and then we can plate it up and get stuck in. Do you know it is a cook, right? You know, it's my love, it's my passion, it's my hobby. But sometimes I just get really irritated by certain ingredients. Like garlic and onions. You've got that sort of paper on the outside. It's really difficult to get off sometimes. Onions, they make you cry. Bloody onions. And sometimes the skin is really hard to get off onions as well. You'll slice into it, hoping for the best. Like, please, just let this onion skin come off really easily. And then you're there for like 10 minutes just getting off tiny little bits of onion skin. A garlic and onion skin just seems to float everywhere. You've got it on the chopping board, you take it to kind of scrape it in the bin, and it just goes -loo 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 -loo, floats all about your kitchen, lands on the floor, all in your crevices, all over the place. Then you've got to get the hoover out. <sighs> F onions and garlic. Look at this work of art. It smells incredible. My simple quick family meal, meatball pasta bake. Now let's tuck in. So I've got a meatball there, some pasta, some cheese. Let's go in. Mm. There is nothing offensive about that whatsoever. What is not to love about meatballs, cheese, and pasta? It's such a simple combination and so easy to throw together but the results are astounding. It's not gonna rock the culinary world and make Gordon Ramsay fall to his knees, but it's a simple, wholesome, delicious family meal. Kids are gonna love something like this, especially if you use my tip and grate the veg, you can kind of sneak the veg in the sauce. Because I don't know what it is with kids and vegetables, they just seem to have an aversion to broccoli, don't they? Like, just eat it, it's good for you. So there we have it, my simple meatball pasta bake. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Are you gonna make it? Or are you not gonna make it? And also if you've got any ideas, little tweaks and things that you'd do to this recipe, let me know. And if you've just found this video, make sure you hit subscribe. And when you do, make sure you hit the bell icon, allow all notifications. That way, when I upload a new video, you get notified. And remember to share it, tweet it, Facebook it, Instagram it, Pinterest it, email it, WhatsApp it. Just, just do it all, just do it all. And I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video and bye for now.